sir. Uh, yes. Yeah, can you hear? Can you hear yes. me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we could start in. We'll start within four minutes. Four minutes. Yes. Four minutes. Two minutes. Yeah, six. Yeah. Sir, we may start, sir. It's, it's fine. Yeah, one second. Good evening, friends. On behalf of Indian Classical Dancers Association, I would like to welcome you all to uh, today's session. Uh, as you know, Indian Classical Dancers Association had been organizing many events since the last uh, three years. And this is an organization of classical dancers from all over India and abroad. And uh, we have around 18,000 members in the two Facebook pages and uh, 1,750 members in the WhatsApp groups. So uh, we have members in every city in India and every major country in India. So all are well connected. So. The objective of the organization is to get united, work together, to organize events and try to get the maximum uh, revenue for the artists, especially during this pandemic period when we are having uh, all online uh, events going on. And uh, uh, the main aim is to promote classical dances and classical dances. And we organize festivals, competitions, workshops, lecture demonstrations, surveys. Then we have discussions with government officials like uh, uh, Director General of ICCR, uh, Chief of SPICMECA, uh, and other cultural organizations. So we try to give them ideas, and we get information from them also. And the dancers get information from all over the world, whatever is happening in the classical dance field. That is one of the greatest advantages. This is not available in any media. This is not, this information is not available in any channels, any newspaper or any other media is available. So this WhatsApp group and the Facebook pages 
are extremely useful for members to exchange their views and to get to know each other and after the pandemic period we are trying to promote each and every dancer to organize festivals in their own cities and to invite other members to organize programs so we would like to request all those uh, members who have joined who are not members of icda whatsapp group may please give your mobile numbers in the chat box or send a message to the number uh, which will be given in the chat box so that you can be a part of this organization and uh, be in the classical dance association there is no other formality as such so today we have one of the eminent uh, persons in the field of uh, art and culture in the field of classical dances to uh, address us uh, during this session she is dr uh, v r devika she is uh, uh, from chennai she is a uh, bharatanatyam artist she is a uh, writer she is a scholar a researcher and an orator and uh, she had been in the field for so many uh, years more than uh, 45 years she had been in the field of uh, uh, art and culture and she is not only uh, uh, in the field of writing and all she is a advisory board member of many state and central government organization many cultural organizations and she is addressing many uh, international seminars all over the world so on behalf of uh, icda may i welcome dr v r deviga to our program and uh, i would like to introduce our coordinator icda coordinator from pune charanya uh, charanya from pune so she will be officially uh, introducing uh, dr v r deviga charanya thank you sir um the lectures and the events at icda is turning out to be equivalent of tedx talks in the world of arts for the past one year highly competent speakers and equally knowledgeable audiences we've all been hearing and listening to so many speakers and so many workshops and lectures i am really delighted and humbled to be curating one more session at icda it is really an honor for me to welcome dr v r devika she is the founder and managing trustee of the asima trust a non-profit organization for linking traditional performing arts and education her phd thesis is on gandhian communication for transformation the philosophical issues and dimensions which was which was completed at the department of philosophy in the university of madras she is a consultant for patishala kfi valipuram and vit chennai on culture she was the director for education and culture of the madras craft foundation and its project dakshina chitra heritage center during the period 1985 to 1996 and at this time she was headed a folk and performing arts program in education which had schools in tamil nadu and they engaged seriously with folk artists she has been a school teacher at ps senior secondary school chennai from 1976 to 1985 and she is also on the advisory council of dakshina chitra and avai home she has been a compere and interviewer and interviewee uh, and a production assistant at all india radio since 1974 and she has done several television programs and also been as a panelist a mentor of the rukmini devi natya kala kshetra she is on the folk and tribal arts and puppetry advisory committee of india of sangeet natak academy through the government of india and has also guest edited the journals of sangeet natak academy dr devika is a trained bharatanatyam dancer under the dhananjayans and she gives her lectures on theory and practice of dance and culture in india she is a freelance contributor to many publications including the hindu the shruti magazine and has written extensively in the week the indian express and the financial express she has been awarded many awards to name a few the kala seva bharati from bharat kalachar the british council charles wallace award for arts and education in uk the goethe institute cultural multiplicator fellowship of germany and a certificate of honorary citizenship from the governor of maryland usa 
She has also received the Rajotsava Award from the Kannada Sangha of Chennai. She has traveled for conferences and lectures and traveled across the globe in many countries like Cambodia, Canada, Finland, France, Germany, Hong Kong, Indonesia, Italy, Malaysia, Mexico, Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, Sri Lanka, South Africa, uh, South Korea, Taiwan, Thailand, Sweden, UK, and USA. I'm sure if I'm going to be reading her uh, bio data, we might land up using the entire session. So let me stop for the introduction here and let us move on to the main topic. A very warm welcome to this forum, ma'am, today. The topic of discussion, Dr. Muthulakshmi Reddy, a broader picture. We all dancers, most of us are dancers here. We do know about Dr. Muthulakshmi Reddy as one who someone got the Devadasi system abolished. And she is described as an English educated elite, a social reformer. But who was actually Muthulakshmi Reddy? And what are her works? And let us understand about this, her life, the works, and much more from Dr. Vyar Devika today. The floor is open to you, ma'am. And we are really awaiting to hear from you. Namaste. Namaste to everyone. And thank you, ICDA, for uh, inviting me to uh, give this talk. Um, I am uh, not a practicing uh, Bharatanatyam artist. Because uh, for me, Bharatanatyam came uh, when uh, I was a school teacher. I was a primary school teacher, kindergarten and primary school teacher, where um, when I saw the uh, classes that uh, I had Bharatakalanjali of the Dhananjayans, because their son was my student, and I told them uh, I'd like to learn because I'm so interested in the arts, because I want to feel it in my body, and I also want to use it in my classroom because uh, there's so much of uh, you know uh, we know that in the Natya Shastra the first story that uh, uh, has, says is that uh, it is for communication of ideas so for me uh, communicating a text and uh, bringing it out and uh, to an audience is also like a teacher you know a teacher is also like that so I wanted to use the technique of Bharatanatyam in my classroom teaching. So I told them that I will never do my Arangetram, I'll never perform on the stage, but I'd like to learn. So I learned, uh, they were very, very gracious and unbelievable time I have had with them, uh, learning uh, various uh, uh, pieces of uh, uh, fantastic compositions and the technique. And of course, I became known for my theory speciality and uh, so I, I was teaching at Kalanithi Narayanan's uh, uh, um, Abhinaya Sudha as a theory teacher. And, uh, you know, one thing led to another and I became a critic. And I started writing and speaking about the art and organizing. So I'm always on the side wing looking. So uh, Muttu Lakshmi Reddy uh, was uh, an enigma to me. I uh, came to know about Muttu Lakshmi Reddy because in 1985, I uh, joined the Madras Craft Foundation and INCHAC and we started a small uh, project at Avvai Home founded by Muttu Lakshmi Reddy on spoken English. And uh, there I met a lot of these people and then I, they requested me to produce uh, uh, a production on Muttu Lakshmi Reddy. That is when I began to read her autobiography and interviewing uh, a lot of people. And then I realized that many, many people at Avai Home were children of Devadasis and uh, teachers there. And each story that I was told just shook me. And I kind of wondered what is this scholarship that is talking about Muttalak Shmeredi as a an English educated elite and uh, all that. So then, you know, I began to uh, probe further and I'm still probing and probing and probing because every talk of mine, uh, I when I finish it, I go back and I say and learn something more. And I the earlier talk becomes redundant. So uh, it's it's happening like that. Now, let me share my screen. I'm going to start my PowerPoint. I'm going to 
ओके ओके सो बिकॉज यू आर ऑल डांसर्स इट्स आई एम कॉन्सेंट्रेटिंग ऑन हर केस ऑफ द देवदास इज but we have to look at the broader picture what she was and where she came from and why did she do this uh, we need to understand that which is why i i gave the title understanding the broader picture because this was not the only thing she did this pre presentation owes thanks to the many long long hours of conversations on the subject with the following people Uh, late uh, shri vaidishwaran kovil uh, muthu swami pillai uh, we traveled to france together and uh, uh, the uh, number of hours uh, i had with him talking about this subject is unbelievable and uh, dr sarojini varadappan uh, who gave me a lot of time and talked about dr muthu lakshmi reddy dr krishna murthy who was uh, uh, the son of uh, dr muthu lakshmi reddy dr v shanta who was the chairman of cancer institute founded by muthu lakshmi reddy and dr s anandi who is a researcher at the mids madras institute of development studies uh, on social uh, uh, development and women's issues and many teachers uh, at away home the these conversations have led me to this and i must thank all of them so let me begin with this quote of muthu lakshmi reddy the question is is it ready with a y or a ready with an i uh, she writes both even she writes both and even her son writes both ready as r e d d i and r e d d y so we don't know which one to take now so education freedom and responsibility bring out the best in the individual and the race this applies to all men and women irrespective of caste creed or color this is what she said she was born on 30th july 1886 to uh, chandramal chandramal came from the melakara community melak in those days they were not called the devadasis even then the word had already been uh, corrupted to tevadiyar which was a woman of easy virtue already but the, the respect uh, that uh, they got from their music and uh, their uh, art was there she belonged to the melakara community there was a chinna melam and there a periya melam the chinna melam were the uh, dancers and the periya melam was the uh, um, artists who played the nadaswaram and uh, you know they were the periya melam so she came from the melakara community now narayan father was narayana swami narayana swami um, belonged to a distinguished uh, family of pudukote he was uh, an english professor at hh uh, raja college of pudukote he was also a tutor because pudukote was a princely state um uh, you know it was not under officially under british india then the east india company it was not officially under them it was a princely state but you know the british uh, uh, forced them to accept advice from them the king was a uh, forced to accept the advice of the east india company and the british but narayana swami was uh, tutoring the royal uh, Uh, in the royal palace also and he was teaching in the college so he was a well known person he had a wife called shivagamo shivagamo had two um, children both had died at childbirth you know and they had both died in uh, infancy and shivagamo was said to have been a very simple lady and um, in the house uh, suddenly one day the the sister of the king asked narayana swami to become the chief patron at a bottu kattidal bottu kattidal is the formal um, uh, coming out kind of a situation for a uh, devadasi where she gets married to the god and she gets dedicated to god and a patron 
uh, will um, be her uh, uh, provider for the rest of her life uh, if he wishes. And uh, he does, he, there is no legality involved in this, but it was honored by many of them. But most of the patrons were people of means. The king's sister asked Narayana Swami to become the patron for this girl. And she was 11 years old, 1880. And uh, he was taken aback because he was already 30 years old. And um, uh, she, he said, I'm not a rich man. I don't have money. Uh, I can't uh, look after. But uh, he could not say no to the um, uh, sister of the king. And uh, he uh, very uh, reluctantly agreed. At the ritual, as the ritual was happening, Chandramal is said to have held his hand tight and told him, I don't want to continue this tradition. I don't want to be here. I will look after you. I will be your wife forever, for all my life. So please remove me from here and take me. I will be like a wife to you completely. He was taken aback. And so he made a small house for her. In those days, there was no way the children born to a relationship like this would have would know would have the name of the father. It was always the uh, the mother's name, and they were uh, the children of the mother. But Narayana Swami uh, and Chandramal called their children C N, gave the initial C N, C for Kovilur Chandramal and N for Narayana Swami Iyer. And Narayana Swami Iyer accepted these children as his and actively participated in their uh, growth. You know, uh, being a Brahmin, he uh, was not allowed to eat or drink in a non-Brahmin's house. So he would carry water to Chandramal's house, to the mother of his children. He wouldn't eat what she cooked. Uh, they had um, some eight children, but uh, four died at uh, uh, infancy and four survived. There was Muttulakshmi, the eldest. She was born on 30th July, 1886. And Sundar the second one. Then Ramaya, Ramaya, um, the only son, and Nallamuttu, um, the youngest sister. Um, the uh, Nallamuttu and Muttulakshmi grew up to be uh, distinguished women uh, in India. Uh, Ramaya, unfortunately, he was in um, uh, the freedom struggle and he was a lawyer. He died very young because he was, uh, while taking part in the freedom uh, struggle, he was chased by the police and uh, he had a fall and that fall had injured his spine and he passed away uh, a little later. So he, he was... Uh, um, a, a martyr in the freedom struggle. So Muttu Lakshmi was put in um, school and um, I will make it short because this is a very long story. There's so much to tell. And uh, she desired to study further. She was exceptionally bright and uh, uh, there, but uh, after uh, uh, the Tinnai school or the Pyal school, there was no girls school. But Mr. Balaya said, let her study. So Narada Sami arranged for her to study at home and write the um, high school exam. There were 100 uh, children who took the uh, high school exam, the uh, SSLC exam uh, in um, uh, Pudukote that year. And uh, 10 passed out of the 100. And the only girl topped. All of them, Muttu Lakshmi. And she said she wanted to go to college. And there was no girl studied in that college before. And um, uh, she, there was a girls college in Palayam Kote, but there was no hostel for girls there. Only Christian hostel was there. So she couldn't go. And uh, so they, she write, writes a letter to the Maharaja in English, requesting help to get into the college. And the Divan, the principal writes to the Raja saying, no, we don't want a girl from the Melakara community. The, our boys will be corrupted. And uh, the Divan also writes to the king saying, this will not help women's education if you allow a girl from that community. 
though her father was a brahmin and the principal of a college they only recognized that she is the daughter of the mother who came from that uh, community so they uh, but against all opposition king bhairava martanda varma he said no uh, tondaiman he said i will allow this girl to go to college and he told her i am going to observe you for 3 months and if your conduct is good other girls might get opportunity to study so they put a big screen in between because you see men are the weaker sex you see they they have no control over their mind any girl will corrupt their mind they so she should not be seen by the boys the boys were on one side of the classroom and this girl was on one side and they put a big screen in between only the teacher could see her and they would ring a bell after she had exited the college and only then the boys could come out of the classroom so but this girl was so brilliant and then she wanted to study medicine can you imagine the whole uh, the place was pudukote um, was aghast the the many many parents uh, said we will uh, remove our children from this college if a girl is admitted uh, and then um, a teacher uh, offered to resign but the raja said uh, no she will uh, study here he gave her a scholarship to go to madras and uh, join madras medical college and in the madras medical college the british principal told her uh, why don't you take the easier uh, lcm course because uh, those days it was called mbcm you know which included uh, surgery mbbs now was MC- mbcm because cm was a latin word for surgery and uh, so mbcm course was uh, he said you know girls will faint at the sight of blood and so you can't be a surgeon uh, you are very frail and you look very timid uh, why don't you take the easier course but she said she just stood her ground and she said i am going to study only mbcm she becomes the first um uh, graduate in india uh, in india first indian girl to uh, graduate mbcm course and uh, so let's look at her uh, personal life born to a devadasi and an upper caste man her father narayana sami contrary to prevailing custom recognized his children as his she was unable to escape her mother's communal identity because while she was going to school and college archins would go running behind her saying um, devadas's girl is going to college and school they would run behind her um, but she was determined so she first girl students at maharaja's college pudukote first girl student for surgery at the madras medical college and she got gets when she uh, passed out of madras medical college 5 years later she got the most medals for competency the most medals that year for every every subject she got she topped every subject and they, all the uh, newspapers had uh, published her picture with a gown saying there is this girl you know i mean just imagine principal running in the corridor screaming a girl has got 100% in surgery <laughs> you know even a boy getting 100% would have uh, been uh, exciting but a girl getting 100% and that to her home school girl from a small place uh, first girl student she gets 100% but you know she, while she was studying also you know she uh, this is later but ha huh. stopping the practice of wet nurses for upper class babies there was this habit of upper caste women um having uh, hiring some uh, uh, lower caste woman to come and breastfeed their babies the thing is she also should have had a baby at that time so denying her the mother, her child the mother's milk she comes and feeds and this mother's milk goes waste and she, she was fed by a uh, uh, dalit woman or a lower caste woman and uh, she felt that her colic uh, uh, and her um, uh, constant uh, asthma and her being very frail uh, and weak 
was because of because she was uh, breastfed at um, when she was a baby and she decided that she will campaign for uh, mother's uh, breastfeeding then uh, in uh, while she was studying in madras medical college even as she came uh, you have to give me the time okay because i keep on talking and uh, i need to to kind of uh, look at uh, uh, yeah so how much time do i have till uh, for, for 45 minutes no ma'am you can please go i think we yeah, have time okay okay uh, so she uh, when she came to madras uh, with her father uh, to join the madras medical college a maternal relative of hers that is uh, a girl bim that was related to her mother from the melakara community who had been pregnant and who had been looked after by this family had died at childbirth so the father of the child had nothing to do with the child with the with the child or the girl and she was very young that girl was very young and this enraged muttu lakshmi and she decided i am going to work for removing the system of uh, dedicating young girls and making them the um, you know uh, uh, companions for men who are already married with no strings attached she decided that she will work uh, to get this removed and as a medical student she asked her mother to bring that baby to madras and she would put her on her lap and study and this girl she called her subbu lakshmi and she adopted her as her own daughter and um, brought her up and subbu lakshmi was married uh, into a, a good family by um, uh, muttu lakshmi i mean by good i mean um, well placed family uh, so she fought for property rights for women as uh, uh after her medical uh, while studying for medical uh, degree she visited the you know dr m c nanjun rao was a very famous uh, um, chemical examiner and he uh, had a you know the cheapest dispensary in madras and he was a big nationalist and he was a freedom fighter he supported subramanya bharati he so he uh, he it was he who got sarojini um and naidu married uh, to the man she wanted because it was an intercaste marriage he held it in his own house and it was he who introduced sarojini naidu to muttu lakshmi reddy he had also helped vivekananda before he left for chicago this mc nanjun rao uh, uh, gave her a lot of information about the freedom struggle about tilak about Gok gokale and uh, you know, sarojini naidu took her to all these lectures that were being uh, held and sarojini's own speeches were uh, enthralling for her sarojini naidu took her to the theosophical society and she listened to anibesan speak and anibesan speeches were uh, uh, extremely electrifying for muttu lakshmi reddy because uh, anibesan was talking about ramayana and mahabharata and her whole body was shaking with emotion as she was uh, speaking about the vedas and things like that and it it was there that uh, muttu lakshmi um, uh, they decided to start this women's india association and she became the first member of um, women's india association and in 1925 she was she got a scholarship to go to england to study uh a special uh, uh, training for uh, disease of women and children in the meanwhile in 1923 24 her younger sister sundar ambal who had been uh, who had just got married and uh, had conceived uh, started throwing up uh, blood uh, uh, in her uh, stool i mean there was blood in her stool and she kept telling her sister that uh, she is constantly having stomach aches and these uh, she was examined by many doctors muttu lakshmi brought her to madras from bangalore where uh, she was married and um, uh, you know she felt that uh, you know everybody was treating her for uh, dysentery for um, 
stomach pain, for constipation, etc. But Mutulakshmi felt that there was something more serious. And when she examined her, she found a tumor in her um, uh, uterus. And she knew that there was something very serious, much more than uh, uh, just constipation. And it turned out to be malignant. And But there was no radium available in Madras at that time. She had to send her to Kolkata and Ranchi from there, you know, to send her sister. And then when her sister died in front of her own eyes, uh, she felt very sad. And then she said, I'm going to work for uh, betterment of cancer uh, treatment in India. And so when she goes to England, uh, she takes Subulakshmi and her own two sons, Krishnamurti, Ram Mohan and Krishnamurti along. When she goes for two years to study women, uh, diseases of women and children. Interesting is also how she got married. She kept telling her mother she was not interested in marriage. Those days, girls were getting married by the time they were 12. And here she was 26 and not interested in marriage. And she kept telling her mother, please don't force me into marriage. I'm not interested. But there was a doctor who had just come back from uh, Edinburgh, FRCS, Dr. Sundaram Reddy. Dr. Sundaram Reddy, who was working in Vishakapatnam uh, Hospital, and he heard about her and uh, about, uh, he writes a letter to her saying, I'd like to marry you. And she re promptly replies saying, sorry, I'm not interested in marriage at all. And he travels to Madras. He goes all the way to Pudukote, meets her mother and tells her, I have no parents, so I'll be your son. Please uh, make your daughter marry me. So uh, Chandramal cries and Narayana Swami reasons out and finally uh, Muthulakshmi agrees to meet Sundaram Reddy. And the first meeting, she is very put off and he thinks he is totally not interested. But his friend advises him, go and meet her again. Ask for another appointment. She has made him wait 15 days for an appointment. And then uh, sec subsequent meeting, she thought he was a decent man. And uh, she decided to uh, agree to marry him. But not before she took an agreement from him that she will be treated as an equal in this marriage and that he will not object to any of the social uh, uh, work that she does. And she takes a promise from him and then only she marries and they got married according to Brahma Samaj. For one, Hindu religious marriage was not available to her because she was the daughter of a, uh, a woman from the Melakar community and they were intercaste. So what do you do? What kind of ritual will you have? Uh, the official registered marriages have, had not yet come. So they decided to get married according to Brahma Samaj uh, rituals. And so she became, CN Muttulakshmi became Muttulakshmi Reddy. And they got two sons, Ram Mohan and Krishnamurti. But Subulakshmi was there, her older daughter whom she had adopted when she was still studying in medical college. There in... Uh, uh, in uh, uh, England, she saw the cancer uh, uh, treatment development and all that. And then she was quite uh, interested in how prevention can happen, what kind of treatment can be given, and uh, decided uh, that somehow she should start a specialty uh, treatment for cancer. Because that time, cancer was just called uh, karma vyadi, and that there was no nothing but death that cancer brought, but she wanted to change that. Uh, and when she came back, WIA, Women's India Association, told her that uh, now there is, um, according to the new law that has come, the, the, the political uh, change that has come in the 1919 uh, uh, Montague reforms, Indians can uh, participate in the uh, uh, governance. You know, there can be they can be uh, elected members of the uh, legislative bodies. And so they nominated her as a legislative assembly member, council member for the Madras presidency. Kamala Devi Chattopadhyay and Muthulakshmi Reddy had been uh, um, nominated, but Muthulakshmi won by uh, 55 votes. And uh, Muthulakshmi became a member, the first woman member 
of a legislative assembly. She became. And then unanimously she was uh, voted uh, deputy uh, president of the council. And there is no other place in the world at that time where a woman had held such a post. And she fought for every bill of hers. Now, after 75 years of freedom and all of us uh, studying in colleges, uh, standing shoulder to shoulder with men, we can uh, talk about Muthu Lakshmi Reddy. But just imagine 19, not, uh, 1912, 1914, 1920s, when there was no other woman in that assembly and she is standing and arguing uh, with stalwarts like Satyamurti and Sri Rajagopalachari who were stalling every one of her bills because raising the age of marriage of uh, girls to 16 was fought tooth and nail. The men were simply not for it. They were telling her that she is corrupting uh, the minds of the girls because girls have to be married by the time they were eight or nine. You know, and uh, but she said, I am examining girls. Uh, they are having torn membranes uh, because uh, their bodies are not yet ready to carry the product of intercourse, you know, to, to its full term. That is why girls were dying at uh, childbirth. And the man would marry again. And maybe a girl younger than her, he would marry. And so, you know, this, uh, she was getting nauseated by this. Um, uh, and she fought for property rights for women. And she fought for franchise for women. And she fought for widow remarriage. Kamala Devi Chattopadhyaya became one of the beneficiaries of that because Kamala Devi was a young widow and uh, she married Ch Chattopadhyaya later. She had married a Krishna Rao earlier and he died uh, two years after the marriage and she was a child widow. But she married uh, um, later Ch Chattopadhyaya because of this um, law that uh, Muthu Lakshmi and uh, Sister Subalakshmi fought for. Because she was in the assembly, she was able to give voice to all these uh, demands that were coming up. So um, uh, it is when she was in the uh, assembly, she kept remembering her mother, how her mother had uh, uh, stood at, a, at age 11 and 12. And, and then later, you know, when Muttulakshmi was about 10 years old, uh, she, mother wanted to get her married. But the, but somebody in Chandramal's house died at that week, so the marriage could not be held, uh, unfortunately for Muthulakshmi. But her brothers, Chandramal's brothers, were fighting. They wanted Muthulakshmi to be dedicated. She, Chandramal is said to have stood like a woman possessed, standing there and saying, no, I will not allow my daughter to be dedicated. She will not, she will uh, get married and she will... Uh, I want marriage for her. For her, honor was in marriage. Whereas for her daughter, education was uh, honor. So the mother and daughter fought all the time about education and marriage because the mother wanted her to marry. And But Muttulakshmi remembered, remembered her mother's uh, steadfast. Uh, why would she do it if uh, the system was so good as uh, uh, some, of, some of the scholars are talking about? You know, if there was so much respect, it was, if there was so much thing, why would uh, she do it? And she met Muvalu Ramamritamal, who was fighting, she, who also came from the tradition. And uh, she was fighting in the grassroots in Muvalur. And it was Muvalu Ramamritamal who, who was introduced to Muthu Lakshmi by E.V. Ramaswami Nayakar, who uh, gave her a lot of uh, information and she invited her to many seminars that she was conducting. So Muthu Lakshmi traveled all over to um, speak to the Devadasi women. And um, of course, there were some prominent Devadasis who were against this bill to prevent um, uh, dedication of young girls as Devadasis. She was, uh, Muthu Lakshmi was very, very clear that she was not going after the art at all. It was the dedication that she was going after. Unfortunately, the art was, uh, um, uh, you know, complicatedly uh, mixed with, you know, in, entangled with the dedication because, you see, in a society, in a patriarchal society, the man 
wants his wife to be only in the kitchen. It's the public woman he wants company of. You know, and these public women were not allowed to marry because it's the man's honor that is involved in it. You know, it's such a uh, iniquitous uh, relationship. While they are respected for their art and their uh, erudition uh, and uh, their scholarship and their uh, their uh, music and their beauty, because of mixed uh, blood, they were incredibly beautiful uh, women and who are very strong women. But why would the society uh, say that uh, an, uh, an artist should not marry? This is what Muthurakshmi was uh, uh, fighting against. You know, She was saying, why? Because the Agama said eight years, the girl should be dedicated to the temple, you know? And then by the time uh, they are um, 18, they would have had uh, some four children I, or die at childbirth because of difficult uh, pregnancy and uh, childbirth. Anyway, okay. So she makes uh, data in 1926, zero to five. There were 20,000 uh, girls married, 1,316 widowed, zero to five years. Can you imagine? what their life would have been, you know, to never wear colors, to never have uh, flowers in their hair, to never uh, oil their hair, to shave off their hair and just be in the kitchen and not be seen uh, in, uh, in auspicious occasions. Zero to five and five to 10, 6,000 plus widows. Can you imagine what their life would have been? She wanted to change all this. And so while she was arguing the case, you know, she had to match. She had to gain that authority, speech of authority to match the stalwarts like S. Satyamurti and Rajagopalachari and others in the assembly. And her husband and his uncle would sit and uh, rehearse her and her father at home. They would rehearse her like opposition. They would uh, rehearse her arguments. So um, it is said that uh, Satyamurti told her, uh, you know, uh, Devadasis are safety valves for the society. So she is said to have thundered, okay, then you get your daughters become Devadasis. She is said to have thundered. If you want safety walls for your society, get them from your family. And uh, but this was deleted, uh, said to have been deleted from the proceedings of the assembly because it was too provocative uh, uh, an exchange that took place. While this was going on, three girls came and knocked at her gate. They had come from Namakal, all the way from Namakal, three young girls. And they told, uh, they, Ram Mohan and Krishnamurti were playing in the compound and they went and saw them and they said, we want to see Amma, Dr. Amma. And they told her, so we, we are running away from Bhutukattadal. Tell us uh, what alternative you have for us. You know, so she asked them, come in and told her sons, you must call them Akka. And she tried putting them in a hostel. Um, the hostels were all caste based. So they wouldn't take them. Then uh, she tried putting them in schools. Schools would not take them because they were from the Melakara community and the father's name was uh, had to be mentioned. Schools would not take them. So she said, all right, I will start a school. I will start a home for them myself. So she finally founded Avvai home, Avvai Illam, because as soon as they heard that she was keeping these girls in her house and looking after, steady stream of girls began to come. Three became seven, seven became 15, 15 became 26. And so she had to rent a house and call it, why did she call it Avvai home? Because Avvai, the great uh, poetess, Tamil poetess, was a woman of uh, caliber that she, uh, very much admired because she 
uh, traveled and she advised the kings and uh, she you know she was a very very strong woman so she wanted all her girls to be like avvais so she called it avvailam and uh, now today avvailam has uh, trained thousands and thousands of girls and many of them have become teachers those three girls one became a doctor one became a teacher and i i think the other one got married and became a housewife and uh, so in avvai home she got many many of these girls married and many of them uh, were able to expand their horizons by becoming teachers and others she also founded the avvai rural health services for village women she founded the maternity center where uh, uh, she wanted to provide uh, quality care for uh, delivery uh, oh, and uh, founded the adiar cancer institute the founding of the adiar cancer institute itself is a big big story worth a novel you know there's so much to tell about how she achieved it how she was able to really come uh, uh, make that happen and today it is an iconic institution in asia because of dr shanta also behind her uh, her disciple dr v shanta and her son dr krishna murthy Uh, brought it to this level uh, but uh, the story of cancer institute uh, i think i'm i've just made it one chapter in my book but uh, it requires one whole book actually uh, the whole story so now let's go to and uh, jawahar lal nehru came to inaugurate uh, to lay the foundation stone for the adiar cancer institute abolition of dedication of young girls as devadasis uh vote kattadal um, several um, uh, uh, art dancers and scholars may fight with me saying this these are dalit girls they are not the isai vellalar families so don't uh, make uh, call the call it the same but what she was trying to do was give all the girls the freedom uh to if they want to train in music and dance let them do it but let them stand on their own two legs why uh, do this now i mean if they want to have relationship with married men they should do it on their own free will and knowing the consequences at when they are adults they they should not be forced into it so annam adasi in uh, 1842 had her uh, but took tied at the age of 10 and she according to red records was entitled to one kalam pad paddy every month and one and a half handful of cooked rice a day thus the potukattal ceremony was a transaction that secured a girl's commitment to local economies of land and guaranteed her sexual and aesthetic labor so what what did she have to give in return an aesthetic her aesthetic labor and her sexual labor she had to give in return sone ji writing in 21st century refers to devadasi lifestyle as non conjugal sexual lifestyle such vocabulary did not exist until recent times if it is non conjugal like sexual lifestyle it should be the free will of the man and the woman is what murthu lakshmi reddy constantly said it should not be um, a system that allows it chennai nallayappa natuvanar a grandson of the tanjore quartet composed a performance where the dancer would tie vegetables to their bodies and would slice them off while dancing and the nach performances include both hindu and muslim girls so this raghavaya chari writes in 1806 a race of public women in india were regularly bred up for dancing and singing why the like does not exist in europe may be easily accounted for the ladies of all ranks and families in europe are indiscriminately taught to read and write and initiated in the art of music and dancing he says 
so uh, the, this there was this community that could only do that and if we are reading these which are glorifying uh, the system we should also read uh, the the contrary uh, books the anti notch movement actually began in south india when the fiefdom of pudukote in 1878 had initiated it under the guidance of divan a seshaya shastri there is no evidence that shastri was enthralled by evangelist literature or colonial government he did it to protect a young king from squandering his wealth in licentiousness so even uh, in um, uh, shilapadikaram we learn that uh, the dancing girl uh, family has taken away all the property of uh, kovalan uh, without the girl knowing about it and though she loves him she, uh, it is the wife that becomes the heroine you know the wife who is married to him who becomes the heroine and the child born to him uh, is not taken into account so it's uh, it's always been an uh, iniquitous relationship so 1892 there was a hindu social reform association that was formed uh, they gave a petition to the governor of madras against uh, dedication of girls 1893 mysore state abolished dance in temples in 1900 ramachandran arya mission distributed pamphlets and wrote articles about it 1901 the madras consensus happened question of how to describe the devadasi was she married or not the devadasi of course uh, said i am married he is my husband you know for her it was marriage that had happened 1912 three bills in central legislation leg legislator all bills dropped out 1913 prevention of dedication of girls under 16 bill government of india raised the age of girls for extramarital relations to 16 that you can have relation extramarital relationship with a girl if she is 16 years old legally 1924 the bill of 1913 was changed a bit and passed as law dedication okay unless it was for immoral purposes now how do you pro uh, prove immoral uh, purpose you know that is uh, immorality is a is a word that is very uh, loosely used in these times but uh, morality was the currency in currency at that time just like uh, human rights became currency later and um, uh, hereditary rights became currency now and uh, uh, you know anti colonialism and um, appropriation became uh, a word used by a lot of scholars later uh, so you know um, everything is kind of um, now in the word in uh, currency is decolonization you know so they say all educated people are colonized they are colonized minds you have to decolonize them so uh, there was an amendment of the uh, religious endowment act by tabled by dr you know she had said the perpetuators of the um, system must be punished but the men removed that clause do you know that so of course this is sundaram reddy who married her and uh, ram mohan and uh, krishna murthy her sons towards the end of her life she was uh, suffering from glaucoma and she had become blind but uh, dr v shanta told me she could move about in cancer institute and nobody would know she was really blind you know she was uh, looking uh, you know asking after her cancer patients and all that so there were seminars and a uh, whole lot of uh, uh, things happened muttalakshmi reddy met mahatma gandhi in 1927 and he blessed the bill there were 
some uh, Devadasis who were opposed to the Movalu Ramaratna Mall and Padmavati Mall of Tirunal Veli supported the bill. Movalu was Ramaratna Mall is a nice story. I cannot tell you right now because that's a that's a big story. Uh, I, you know, it requires another lecture, a full lecture because Movalu Ramaratna Mall is a very significant uh, person in the uh, anti Devadasi bill. She influenced Muthulakshmi Reddy quite a bit. And she also gave her uh, materials needed. And uh, she also gave her that line, why don't you get your family members to come in? You know, uh, she is said to have given that line to Muthulakshmi. And uh, so, but uh, Bengalur Nagaratna Mal and D, the Doraikunna Mal, these were the privileged Devadasis. They opposed the bill and they wrote to C.P. Ramaswamy Iyer. 1920, they, you know, uh, 1929, she said, you give whatever uh, land holdings uh, they had and let them not work in the temples and not give uh, dance in the temples. Let them do something else and um, uh, let them uh, live on their own. And she cut the dedication and the art but when this happened, the Devadasis had nothing else to do. I mean, they, you know, they, they only knew the art. They were not uh, farmers. They could not uh, use uh, the land. So, though majority of Devadasis welcomed it, not everybody was uh, uh, benefited from it. So, then there was permission for Devadasis to legally marry. This became a law. This received tremendous support from the Devadasis, but Satyamurti opposed it, saying Devadasis were like a safety valve. And lot of many Devadasis had kept picture of Muttalakshmi Reddy in their personal altars in their houses. So in a speech, a VIP speaker praised Dr. Muttalakshmi Reddy for taking up the cause of her fallen sisters. She stood up and cut him short and thundered. How dare you call? This was a big minister, I believe. She stood there and said, how dare you call them fallen sisters? The man falls before the woman falls. The men are always older and knew what they were doing. Without male chastity, female chastity is not possible. All laws should be equal to men and women and both should be equally responsible. That was her uh, fight. So in 1930, um, Rajaji said, let's give it to public uh, uh, opinion. We must circulate it. But at that time, uh, Muttalakshmi Reddy resigned from the Madras legislature, pro protesting against the arrest of Gandhiji after the salt march. Rajaji refused to take up the bill because he felt that we were they were uh, uh, interfering with the Hindu customs. So he didn't want to take up the bill. Then uh, Neh Patel and Nehru wrote to Gandhi, uh, Rajaji and said, take Muttalakshmi Reddy back into the legislature. She refused his offer to nominate her from reserve constituency for women. She said, why should I stand for women's reserve quantity? I'll compete with men, she said. And finally, she was, she was brought back. Then the World War II intervened. Um, she was not in the assembly way when it was passed on 5th December 1947. The act said the Devadasis were, was permitted to marry if she wanted. Governor General gave his assent on uh, 17 January 1948. There was some bad fallout as all Devadasis did not benefit from them. And there was also huge debates between uh, e. Krishna here and uh, Dr. Reddy about the art of being presented in the music academy. And he really fought for uh, the Devadasi art to be presented. He said, don't throw the baby out of, with the bath water. And uh, he, he, he also fought for uh, folk arts, but folk arts were not accepted as uh, um, the uh, proscenium uh, performances. So she said any art and culture worth surviving will certainly hold its own against all times and against all conditions. 
our attempts should be free to free it from its ugly associations and the incrustations of ages, which now keeps it dim and repulsive to many, so that the divine art may be learned and practiced by all. Then only India's art, the rich legacy of ages, will shine brighter and will command the respect and admiration of the world. She said. She, uh, of course, she became a part of the High Talk Committee for Educational Reforms, and. They have been a subject of op apparently opposed discourses for over a century and a half. On the one hand, various perceptions of them in the colonial periods are converged in a strong disapproval and condemnation of their moral conduct. And post-colonial scholarship, the fact that some of these women were performing artists of repute, of great repute, provided the ground for a feminist resurrection that separated them from those that did not belong to these privileged traditions and place them in a newly created place, space that redefined and respected their freedom, autonomy, and creativity. So I am ready for any questions that may be asked to me. Um, before we open the forum, um, first of all, ma'am, um, the story that you took us through it, at least for me, it was like a movie running through since the time that you began from the father of Dr. Matulakshmi Reddy. And of course, like the way you ended, art and culture has survived and her opposition to the Devadasi Act, I somehow feel was a genuine thing. Otherwise, we would not be doing what we are doing today. So, Thank such you. a work. And, uh, you know, the thing is... Uh, uh, everybody kind of puts um, uh, Rukmini Devi and Muthulakshmi Reddy in the same uh, box. It didn't happen that way. Uh, it, uh, Rukmini Devi came to dance by chance uh, um, yeah, and then she came. Uh, Muthulakshmi was only interested in the legal uh, status of the women and uh, for her art had to be separate from that. And uh, that was uh, actually done by Rukmini Devi, you know. But it was just a coincidence, one can say. There was no uh, sinister planning to remove uh, all these, uh, as Amrit Srinivasan says, uh, you know, there was sinister planning to get the, uh, to finish off the Devadasis and things like that. But uh, in a letter to Shruti magazine, her maternal niece, Muthulakshmi Reddy's maternal niece, um, uh, Sai Mata Brinda Devi, uh, who was the granddaughter of uh, Shivarama Nantuvanar in Pudukote, she wrote a letter to the Shruti magazine saying, my grandmother was, my Atte, grand, my Atte was very, very sad that uh, the Devadasa system was socially, they were, uh, there was such uh, um, uh, bad treatment for them. And she wanted to get rid of that. Whereas today, after so many, uh, you know, it's like telling my great grandmother, oh, you didn't uh, learn English, you didn't uh, do something, you know. Uh, we must always look at what they did in that context and how they did it, you know. And Gopal Krishna Gandhi wrote to me and he said, um, she was like Ambedkar, correcting from within, you know. Um, because uh, they, uh, you know, you had to, there is this uh, cyclical nature of uh, our culture, isn't it? There is uh, creation, there's preservation, there is destruction, uh, creation, preservation, destruction. Only when something is des destroyed, something else will get created. And then it continues, that cycle continues, you know. So the, the system also came uh, from uh, certain uh, um, traditions that the, the that the men uh, wanted to follow, and so it just they took advantage of their uh, upper caste uh, status and they kind of got religious sanction to it. And she wanted to break that, and she was very religious. She was very religious, and she made all the away home girls um, uh, recite. Uh, um, uh, shlokas and uh, she, they, they had to do puja and everything in the in our home. Of course, there, there is a lot of uh, criticism against that too. 
that she is uh, she was trying to make them upper caste kind of uh, brahminize them or whatever most certainly not she was uh, um, constantly talking about uh, um, not uh, having the caste as a a basis for anything anyway um, yeah um, thank you ma'am uh, let me just make the forum open i will just unmute and give the access for everybody just one minute if there is any question yes i will have to give access just give me a second yeah. one minute yeah now the forum is open participants you can yes sri lata ma'am please hello akka thank you for this wonderful talk sri lata vinodia thank you akka i uh, just wanted a small clarification is it the same uh, sister subalakshmi of ice house who started the it is it is right and uh, yes for the widows and for them they were uh, muttu lakshmi was an honorary uh, um, uh, doctor for uh, the widows home and she had seen young widows you know of 8 9 years old 10 years old and so when they become in ice house uh, they went to queen mary's college you know they studied in the lady wellington lady wellington college yes uh, lady wellington school and queen mary's college you know that was first started as kuppam school and then it became a lady wellington school and then uh, queen mary's college most of the widows from the ice house studied in queen mary's college and uh, muttu lakshmi's younger sister nalla muttu became the first indian principal of uh, queen mary's college aka one more question when uh, they had this uh, showdown between e krishnayer and uh, muttu lakshmi reddy she was not against the art you said you, she was not really for that but uh, in spite of that she, then why was why was there a clash of thing between them at the music academy in the conference because they wanted to only showcase the art the thing was so what she was looking at was that this perpetuation uh, if it continued from the same community then it would uh, and i uh, the thing is that is the black mark for her that uh, she felt that even the art now cut it you know and uh, let it grow into something else so that is the black mark for her that one wishes that she had some feeling for the art and that it was something very precious to be nurtured uh, one wishes that she had but then others had um krishna iyer uh, and of course you know when um, uh, there are so many people who have said that they wanted the same art to continue and that uh, she destroyed the dance when she destroyed uh, she killed uh, uh, dedication that she killed the dance and things like that but every dynasty has added changed lifestyles architecture art everything has changed over the years you can't have the same 10th century chola uh, thing in uh, 20th century you know this was the time in the turning turn of the 19th century into 20th century was the time when uh, hierarchical uh, trades and skills were changing the um, the horizon was expanding and people were taking advantage of formal education that was being given to them and they wanted to break that system of hierarchical uh, ideas it's only now 75 years later after freedom that we want to go back to handloom we want to look at but at that time at that time a weaver's son who was constantly uh, made to feel indebted to an upper caste person wanted to break that uh, system and get uh, an education go be a teacher or do something else you know this this was something just a minute our bell is ringing i'll just open <laughs> sorry 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 for that No, no. I heard it twice, and I was wondering whether it was at this end or that end. <laughs> My maid will not let me. Uh, uh, she'll keep ringing the bell. Okay. Anyway, uh, nice. Thank you, Akka. Yeah, Sri Lata. Uh, does that answer your question? Yes. Yes, it does. Constantly look at her situation, and 
um, and you know, Narayan Sami is said to have hosted a lot of dance, and he is said to have taken her for dances and music. And uh, if they were against the system, um, her grandson says that their house was constantly full of natuvanars and uh, musicians and uh, dancers who were coming from Pudukote uh, for work in uh, Madras. And they always came to her house, used it as a, and they were also consulting her as a doctor. And uh, so there was constant, and they would, there would be food for them in the house. So if they were opposed to it, would they do it? Is a question mark, you know? So she maintained that relationship. At the same time, she felt that if it was dedication, it has to be removed. You know, it, it has to, that uh, disrespect for the art. In fact, I believe she told even some Nadaswaram artists, if they don't give you respect, don't play. You know, she has told uh, some of them. Um, um, in my research for my book now, um, I have uh, met many, many of those uh, different kinds of people and um, the uh, old teachers at our way home, how they have opened up about this. And there is an 82 year old uh, lady who talked to me about how she was brought by Movalu Ramamritam to our way home at the age of six after she had been dedicated, you know? And uh, now she is uh, retired as a matron in a hospital. And she says, yes, I sing. I, uh, I remember uh, the music and everything, but that music um, gave me uh, no authority, no life. It gave to Nagaratnama. Yes. But you know? she was very wealthy. Yeah, at that time. But when she was a child, we know what happened to her also and her mother. You know, we know uh, that story. But as a woman who had risen in the uh, through the ranks and come to that position, she was able to match Muthu Lakshmi in the same kind of language and in the same kind of authority. Why? Because she was able to stand on her own two legs. You know, she had that power to do that. Yes, uh, anybody else? Thank you. Anyone else? A totally different perspective, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, it, it's a pleasure listening to you. Great thoughts. Thank you. Uh, could you please uh, introduce yourself? I think I'm not... speaking. I think it is Hi, Lavanya. This is Lavanya. Yeah. Okay. Lavanya. Okay. Yeah. Lavanya Shivram, is it? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. So, you know, I can even about it for uh, <laughs> three days. But um, even I had the same question, ma'am. Uh, was the art sabotage? because of uh, all these reforms, uh, but then you had the answer to it too. There is no doubt that it was sabotaged, okay? Um, basically, see, when you look at the architecture of uh, um, uh, Brihadishwara temple, and then you look at Gange Kunda Cholapuram, in two decades, though it is similar, there is a change. There is difference. After the Cholas, whoever, whichever dynasty came, they gave their impact, uh, inputs and their, uh, there was an impact of their uh, beliefs and their ideas and society kept changing. And you know, or um, how men started changing their costume, their dressing. In the 1920s, they were wearing black coat and a peta on their head and uh, uh, kacham, uh, veshti uh, in the offices, you know, and uh, how they changed in uh, the course of uh, decades, you know, the entire um, system changed. So if you say that anybody has to be isolated, in isolation, not react to the societal changes, I think we are being fools. You know, if we feel that uh, the, it was in, we must put this in the context of the early 20th century when before India gained independence, there was so much aspiration 
uh, and the women were in the forefront of this. It is the Indian women who fought for this. British had nothing to do with this. It is the women who came from the uh, community, Ramaratna Mal and uh, Muttu Lakshmi, supported by uh, other women. But Muttu Lakshmi Reddy was the one who really took it up. And uh, of course, T. N. Rajaratnam Pillai supported them very much. And um, uh, he uh, he said, T. T. N. Krishnan, uh, sorry, uh, N. K. Krishnan and Madhuram, uh, the actors, they they supported uh, very much. They also came from the same community, and uh, they completely supported all this. So there is a, also a, a theory that uh, the men were jealous of the women, and so you know patriarchy. They they were waiting to be, uh, get this system patriarchal because it was the women who were looking after the the family. It is the women's uh, support that was there. But then there was so much of uh, rules and regulation, remorse, uh, the the for the women there. It was not easy, even if it was matriarchal, you know. Uh, it was not very easy for the women. Yeah. Hi, Radhika. Uh, hello, Devika. Yeah, nice. Uh, yeah, Do you after you're done. Question, Radhika? I, I wanted to ask something, but after you're done. Finished, you tell me. <laughs> uh, no, uh, the um, uh, Nadaswaram uh, artists, were also from the same caste. Yeah. Correct. Uh, and so, uh, wasn't there a, a, a means for patronage for the women artists uh, who, it was not only dancers, they were also, you know, musicians. Um, uh, if the male art, Nadaswaram Vidwans, Tavil Vidwans, there was a method of patronage, right? I don't know what it was, land holdings or a certain quantity of rations or something. Uh, where did that come from and why couldn't women artists be supported without this, uh, you know, exploitative, um, yeah. you know, being concubines? Yeah. Uh, couldn't that be done by the bill? Yeah. This is a very interesting um, uh, idea that you are uh, giving. Uh, it was not a caste, it was a community. Community of, uh, it was guilds, uh, there were uh, uh, skills that were being learned by and adapt were happening from uh, various castes um, that the, the women were adapting. Uh, the, the men, you know, it is interesting that uh, I learned that the girls born to men who were born to Devadasis had no right to become Devadasis. They had to get married in the community. The men had no right for the system, okay? So they were the Periyamelam, who uh, were the Nadaswaram artists and musicians and, uh, you know, so the, the Nadaswaram group was different. Though they were from the same community, they would marry girls from the community, but who were not dedicated. So the dedication happened only to girls who had to remain um, uh, as the breadwinners. And that breadwinning came only from the patron who was already married, who would look after. So the brothers would look for somebody who had the means to look after the entire family. There were men who never worked. They were, if they were good in music and, uh, you know, they, would, uh, they could earn a living. But there were men who did not work. If you see the uh, movies like Krishna Bhakti in the early 30s, you know, uh, you will understand the system. And uh, I have spoken to several uh, women whose uh, ancestors belong to the, in the community and who do not want to be uh, recognized as coming from the community at all, you know. Uh, in fact, uh, when P. Jeevasundari, who wrote uh, the biography of Movalu Ramamritamal, um, uh, who was given complete... Um, uh, cooperation from by her family, her grandson, and uh, all that. But when she, they, the printed book came and she went to give it in their house, they were aghast that their names had been mentioned in the book. They said, we do not want to be associated. They bought the entire lot and destroyed them. The entire lot of the books, 
and uh, her grandchildren are in the US now. And they bought the entire lot and had them destroyed because they didn't want their names mentioned as coming from the community. So uh, if, even Movalo Ramavritam Mal's uh, grandchildren, you know. Uh, so I have met several people who have said, only now a few of them are coming out to talk about it and to tell uh, that they, uh, you know, that they belong. Uh, so it's, it has taken one generation to remove, you know, like um, uh, uh, now it is after the 90s uh, that the identity uh, uh, issues are coming out, you know. It's earlier that they wanted casteless uh, society. Okay, they didn't want recognition as who they belong. It is now they are saying, no, we belong there. We know who we are. Give us that place. It is now that it is happening. So it's a, it's a, it's a flow in the uh, system that's happened. That, how did that happen? Because of the education, because of... Uh, going away from the exploitative uh, uh, system that, that has given the power of discourse, a power of even asking questions and standing up and saying, yes, I am from that community, give me that money, give me my place. You know, that empowerment has come now, which is fantastic because the, the kind of uh, uh, art that was uh, developed by the this community is amazing. Absolutely amazing. I mean, it is to the credit of the women who, in spite of this iniquitous relationship, were able to hold on to them. You know, uh, Movalur Chandramal fought against it. Movalur Ramamurthamal fought against it when uh, it was so difficult to do. And uh, so MS Subhlakshmi ran away from, the, from it, you know. And um, uh, it is because they took the decisions at the time they, they did and stuck to it. So for her, for MS, maybe even uh, the golden cage was better. We don't know. You know, we don't know. Um, but she took the decision at the age of eight, 19 to run away from there. Radhika, does that answer your question? We can keep talking. Yes, thank, uh, thank you. Any more questions? Question. Any other Any other question? Uh, yes, uh, this is Asha from Calcutta. Uh, Ma'am, thank you uh, so much for sparing uh, your time with us and sharing the knowledge. Uh, well, first of all, uh, I read somewhere that uh, All India Radio actually, um, you know, announced that they would take singers uh, who belong to so-called good family and good family in quotes uh, because they yeah. had to produce yeah yeah so they had to produce uh, their marriage certificates and uh, so uh, there is this reading uh, you know newspaper article that i read and it uh, very sarcastically says that uh, so all the jans and the bais i'm talking about the tawaifs of north india uh, all the, uh, all the Jans and the Bais tried becoming Devis just by the virtue of marriage. Now, I have gathered, the, I have read a book called My Name is Gohajan and I could understand what was going on in North India to some extent, very shallow pocket of knowledge though. But uh, I am yet to find out a book uh, which tells me about, you know, like 20 years after this bill was passed in 1947, uh, what was happening in the society. So is there any book or ma'am, if you can share something on that or any article that I can read? Yeah, okay. So this is a, uh, you know, it's like, uh, it's, we are living in a society that is not homogeneous. You know, it has every kind. And uh, the act was uh, intended to free the woman from the from an oppressive uh, system, okay, but it also did uh, harm to the art and the artists because many of them. There are so many people who are writing now that the sati system harmed women. The abolition of sati, 
I read an article that said uh, it uh, harmed women uh, who, who were uh, thrown into Brindavan. You know, instead of being thrown into the fire with their husbands, they were gone. They were taken and uh, uh, left in Brindavan. So the because the sati was abolished, it harmed women. Okay, so there is a perception of all kinds. I am not saying that uh, um, uh, I have met. Uh, enough people who were uh, very sad with the act, but I have also met women who have kept her picture in the altar. You know, so it's both ways. It's both ways for her. It was for her education. Uh, you know, it was that time. Today we can think differently. It was at that time what she could gain what she could uh, 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 talk about. And as a medical practitioner, what she had seen, she needed to uh, work on that, on her convictions and what she had seen. So today we can, uh, you know, on hindsight, we can criticize Gandhi, we can criticize Nehru, we can criticize everybody today. You know, uh, of course there was, uh, even freedom was bad for many people, you know. In India getting freedom was bad for a lot of people. So it's, uh, of course, then the, the Tawaifs and others um, suffered. Many of them suffered. But the act was in Madras presidency. Okay, 1947 act was in Madras presidency that included parts of Andhra and Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. <clears throat> it is this state that... Uh, uh, before that, Mysore had done it. Mysore, you know, uh, it was later that Madras has done it. Um, uh, other states did not take up this act. They didn't make it uh, formal. But then uh, it became a kind of a practiced thing everywhere. So it is the society, you know, um, it is not the act that made All India Radio say, uh, produce your marriage certificate. It was what the society was thinking in the 19th century before the act happened. The act happened because of what the society was uh, uh, doing to these women. You know, and uh, so it was like Chandramal saying, I will only get my daughter married. And the daughter says, no, I will only get educated. You know, for Chandramal, the honor lay in marriage because she was denied that. She was denied the status of a, a woman. Even uh, as I told you, um, Shilapati Karam only deified uh, uh, Karnagi, not Madhavi. You know, Madhavi who had given him all uh, that pleasure and everything. It is Karnagi who is deified in uh, uh, Shilapati Karam, isn't it? So it's, it's like that. I mean... Uh, what uh, All India Radio did at that time, yes, I have heard about these things. And even in Tirvayaru, uh, uh, in the Tyagaraja Aradhana, it, it seems the Devadasis were not allowed to sing. And uh, Nagaratnamal uh, went and uh, stood there and the All India Radio was uh, broadcasting it live. And as soon as the uh, broadcast began, she said, Na Tevadiyar! I am a Devadasi, she shouted. And it came on All India Radio. I am singing, listen, she said. Okay. And then she started a parallel uh, festival, which was attended more. And then later it became together. You know, the, the two brothers who were fighting and there were two festivals happening, etc. Et it's a very interesting story of uh, Nagaratna Mal. Um, but, you know, uh, she said, uh, yes, I come from that community and I'm proud of it. She said that. When could she say that? At the time when she was able to uh, stand uh, against Vera Shalingam and argue with him. Because she was now a woman empowered. Not when she was a young girl and her uncle wanted to uh, send her to a Chetia. You know? Um, it, not at that time. Yeah, sorry. So, Akka, are you writing the book now? 
Yes, it is almost done. Um, I hope uh, it gets published in the next uh, four months. It's with the editor now. The editor is looking at it with a fine tooth comb, asking me questions for every second sentence, <laughs> which is fantastic because you know it kind of uh, uh, you write because you're passionate and you kind of uh, presume everybody knows. Uh, the situation and uh, uh, you write like that and then uh, they ask you some very uh, practical questions and ask you uh, why is this like this and then you also have the word limit and you also uh, all that is there it's a fantastic learning process you know of uh, producing a book is uh, something that uh, humbles you and puts you in your place. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, any other question? I think we can go on with a uh, lot of questions and uh, probably we're just looking forward to your book, man. So once we read the book, there will be much more and many more questions. Uh, yeah. We will have a continuation of today's session at your book launch through ICDA. So we are really looking forward to you publishing the book. At yeah. some point, I'll do a presentation on uh, Movalu Ramamritamal. Sure, sure. We could do that too. Then. Yeah. Surely take it up. And uh, so it was such a wonderful session. And uh, I'm sure uh, most of us are still reliving or we're back 100 years now thinking what would have happened. So with that note, we would conclude uh, today's session. Thank you so much for your valuable time. And... Uh, Konozia is here, Shilataka, Radhika, and uh, Lavanya, and all the other young dancers who are here. Thank you so much for uh, being here today. And uh, Sir, Gopakumar, sir, to come to Ma'am, it was an excellent session, and I, you have, uh, uh, you, your knowledge is, uh, uh, we cannot imagine. Uh, you are a treasure of knowledge. Uh, and I think uh, nobody has done research like you on these things and you can remember these things. You are well studied and uh, it will be a great thing if you can present it to all the universities uh, uh, who are involved in the field of art and culture. So uh, definitely uh, all the universities in India, uh, all over the world should invite you for a lecture of these uh, sessions. And uh, uh, ICD... Well, she is India doing that. She is uh, doing that. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we would like to have your uh, book launch in our uh, ICDA platform. So uh, we can have it uh, anytime uh, once it is uh, once it comes out. So on behalf of uh, ICDA, I would like to extend our heartfelt thanks to you, ma'am. And thank you very much. And thank you all the participants. And thank you, Charanya, for the excellent host. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, 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 thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Saranya. Thank you. 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 Thank you.